Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews in Washington. Let me start tonight with this. America is a land of liberty. People born here get the greatest, most well-guarded rights in the world, and there's nothing I'm prouder of. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness is what America is all about. And so we have debates, debates about the most central questions, these questions, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those words are the ones that Jefferson gave us. Well, tonight we go after those questions, starting with the question, as out there as it may be, does the United States government have the right to target an American here in America with a drone strike? We have a great person to address that question, Senator Dianne Feinstein, chair of the United States Senate Committee on Intelligence. Anyway, late this afternoon, before we get started, John Brennan was confirmed to be the next head of the CIA. The final vote was pretty strong, 63 to 34. Brennan's nomination reignited debate, of course, about the use of drones against American American citizens overseas. And then Senator Rand Paul added a wrinkle. He wanted to know, can the government kill Americans here on U.S. soil? Well, last night he staged an epic, nearly 13-hour filibuster on the Senate floor to raise alarms about the possibility. Earlier this week, Attorney General Eric Holder wrote that Paul's scenario was entirely hypothetical, would only be possible under, quote, extraordinary circumstances, well, such as after Pearl Harbor or 9-11 attacks that did not satisfy Senator Paul. Let's take a look. The very specific question we're asking is, does the president believe he has the authority to kill Americans who are not engaged in combat in America with targeted drone strikes? And I think the answer is no, but they haven't given us that answer. Well, today, White House spokesman Jay Carney said the attorney general sent Paul's letter, a new letter, sent President Paul's office, a new letter answering that question. Let's listen to the comment. This is uh, from the letter, quote, does the president have the authority to use a weaponized drone to kill an American not engaged in combat on American soil? The answer is no. The answer to that question is no. Uh, and that is signed. That is a letter that is signed by the attorney general and was uh, submitted to uh, Senator Paul in his office. Well, finally this afternoon, Rand Paul, the senator, said he was satisfied with the administration's response. Let's listen to Paul. Hooray! For 13 hours yesterday, we asked him that question, and so there is a result in a victory. Under duress and under public humiliation, the White House will respond and do the right thing. So now, after 13 hours of filibuster, we're proud to announce that the president is not going to kill unarmed Americans on American soil. My next question would be, why did it take so long? Why is it so hard? And why would a president so jealously guard power that they were afraid to say this? But I am glad, and I think that answer does, that question, the answer does answer my question. Senator Feinstein, thank you for joining us from Capitol Hill. Was that a reasonable demand by uh, your colleague, Senator Paul, or is this sort of a build-up story built up by him, hyped up? Well, I think it's built up. I think it's hyped up. I think it's cleared up. Uh, it was cleared up yesterday when Senator Cruz asked the question uh, in the Judiciary Committee. And, uh, uh, I, I, you know, it can be a complicated question. When it's reduced down to the basic simple fact of what it was said, the answer is clearly no. And no drone is going to be used in the United States against an American citizen walking down a street or sitting in a cafe and you know and then there was a stupid example of a drone being used against Jane Fonda I mean uh, I don't think this is befitting the Senate floor having said that uh, clearly uh, Senator Paul got the answer in writing signed by the Attorney General which is very definitive yeah. Well, here's your colleague, John McCain. He took to the Senate floor today and attacked Senator Paul, saying he's giving credence to people who fear the government, the fear that the government's out to get them, the sort of the black helicopter crowd. Let's watch uh, your other colleague, John McCain, in action here. To somehow allege or infer that the president of the United States is going to kill somebody like Jane Fonda or someone who disagrees with the policies is, is a stretch of imagination, which is frankly ridiculous. We've done a, I think, um, a disservice to a lot of Americans by making them believe that somehow they're in danger from their government. They're not. 
do you think, Senator, that uh, technology, and you and I have grown up with the dynamic, I mean, almost unbelievable, uh, exponential growth in what mankind can do with technology, yeah. is that playing to the paranoia in people? They think if we have the capability, yeah. we're going to use it against average citizens who are of a different political persuasion, for example. Is that why the far right so nervous? Well, I think the drone is a new technology. Uh, in, in some respects, it's the perfect assassination weapon. Uh, it can see from 17, 20,000 feet up in the air. It is very precise. It can knock out a room in a building if it's armed. Um, it can, it's a very dangerous weapon. Uh, and that right now, we have a problem. There are all these nations that want to buy these uh, armed drones. I am strongly opposed to that. Uh, we have no regulation of drones in the United States in their commercial use. You can see drones uh, someday hovering over the homes of Hollywood luminaries, violating privacy. This question yeah. has to be addressed. And we need rules of operation on the border by police, by commercial commercial use and also by military and intelligence use. So this is now a work in progress. We are taking a look at it on the Intelligence uh, Committee, uh, trying to draft some legislation. The administration is looking at a rules playbook as to how these won't be used and how they will yeah. be used. So it's a very complicated subject of new technology, and I think we have to take a pause and uh, get it right. Well, it's great to have you on, Senator Dianne Feinstein, who chairs the Senate Intelligence Committee. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, more on the drones and Rand Paul's epic filibuster. Eugene Robinson is a columnist for The Washington Post and also an MSNBC political analyst. The great thing about having you on, Gene, is you know, Washington Theater, you know how you've seen Mr. Mm -hmm. Smith a thousand times right. like most of us. You know how this is done. Did Paul score a big point on the right or even across the country by standing out there for 13 hours in a real filibuster. Yeah, you know, I, I think he did. And look, my column for tomorrow is the first and probably only column I'll ever write that's, that's kind of complimentary to Rand Paul in that I think he did a service by making us focus on drones, by making us focus on this new technology for all the reasons that Senator Feinstein enumerated. This yeah. is, this is a, they're, they're very precise, they're very deadly. She called it the perfect uh, assassination weapon. And that's kind of what it is. Yeah. And, and, and even if, you, if it's ridiculous to think that a president of the United States is going to assassinate a citizen on U.S. soil with this technology, um, it, even if that's far-fetched, if, if it served to, if raising that question served to, to focus us on what's happening, not what's going to yeah. happen, but what's happening now on the fact that there are reasons to use these things domestically. Are you personally as, as a columnist and an expert right. in politics in this city, are you concerned that we have to have this kind of debate publicly, that there is a possibility somewhere out there on the edge that a, a tough, not, not going to say he did it, but something in a pretty far right like Dick Cheney, mm -hmm. who's pushed waterboarding and things like that, will push this thing that far? I, do you think it's possible that a Jane Fonda could be targeted even by the most no, right-wing American politician we can imagine? I don't think anybody's going to target Jane Fonda. Or any I don't American. Think, I don't think that's going to. Unless I, they're but, carrying a gun. Look, I mean. there are police departments across the country that have filed applications to be able to fly drones for yeah. surveillance or, or, yeah. or for whatever. Well, we had that, that um, situation in, uh, outside of uh, Los Angeles the other week um, where the rogue cop was, you know, it killed all sure. these people. Um, there were... You know, potentially you could have used a drone to do surveillance there, and if you decided the cabin wasn't approachable and that he was putting lives in danger, would what would, what would be, what would be the wrong the what, technology? What, what would be wrong with using that technology rather than uh, a bomb thrown in the window? Good question. Good question. Um, yeah. uh, th We've look, had experience in Pountain Village in Philadelphia, by the way. Exactly, right. <laughs> and they so blew up a whole in block. Philadelphia, as usual, ahead of its <laughs> yeah, time. But, but, but in all seriousness, do you think there's a difference in t why is using the drone worse than, say, uh, smoking out the house or something? Well, it's killing the guy. Yeah, well, it's, kill it, it's killing the guy. And, and there is a certain antiseptic creepy at a distance quality stand back weapons drone okay. warfare that I, I i just think we need to deal with we're going to use them in various ways and we need to figure it out i i think you're right and i think hemingway used to write about that it's tougher to be an infantryman than a tank guy because you have to do the walking into the fear physically walk into it right. uh, anyway take a look at this uh, point senator lindsey made uh, lindsey graham said he made it today actually about the republicans who joined with senator paul in that filibuster yesterday let's listen to graham 
to my Republican colleagues, I don't remember any of you coming down here suggesting that President Bush was going to kill anybody with a drone. You know, I don't even remember the harshest critics of the uh, of our of President Bush on the Democratic side. They had a drone program back then. So what is it all of a sudden that this drone program has gotten every Republican so spun up and to my party? I'm a bit disappointed that you no longer apparently think we're at war. You know, this is the fascinating thing about uh -huh. the right wing. And people watching this show are students of it, maybe mm -hmm. endangered of it. But you have the, the neocon people like Lindsey Graham and John McCain who are ready at the snap of the, of the fingers to go to war. Yeah. It's always, that's the first solution. Let's uh -huh. go to war. They always have one ready. And then you have the very conservative, the old Pat Buchanan breed mm -hmm. of people like Rand Paul, who are very suspicious of our power being used for any purpose besides basic national mm -hmm. defense. Yeah, right. That's a split <laughs> in the Republican Party, and they're going to have to deal with that. But, but, but the other thing he was driving at, I think, is that, look, I, I personally, like a lot of Democrats, I guess, I have confidence. I know that President Obama thinks about the use of drones, and, and, and I know that he, and I, I have confidence in him and, suppose and Eric Holder, right now. No, John Suppose Bannon. Cheney were president right well, now. Exactly. Right now. He's only going to be president for another three and a half years. Others are going to follow, and, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, unless we kind of think about what sort of limits, if any, we want to put you on You remember Cheney's drones. speech about the shadow lands and the gray areas of the world it, and the, the hallways, the back exactly, halls. And he talks exactly. like that in a we, menacing you know, way. It's, it, it, well, and, I'm glad we had uh, My son Michael's been tough on me uh, on this. He's a, he's a very <laughs> civil libertarian guy. And yeah. I've now become less of a skeptic. I think that Rand Paul probably did something good for the country well, in the last two days, and I'm sure he hates to hear me say that. Well, he, he, he's going to hate my call tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Look, a broken clock is right twice a day, there you as go. I've said before. Thank you. You can I'll remember that one. Thank you, Eugene Robinson. And coming up, if there's one thing we learned from Rand Paul yesterday is that senators want to filibust. They ought to stand up and talk in the old way. Jimmy Stewart, get out there and talk. He did it for 13 hours. But Republicans have filibustered President Obama's choice for the D.C. Court of Appeals. They did yesterday, even without doing anything. They didn't have to do a thing. Up next.